Hi, and welcome to the incoming seventh grade parent orientation. My name is Lauren Moore, and I'm one of the junior high counselors. We know this has been a challenging year, but we hope your child is excited about this transition to the seventh grade. My colleague Junko Matana and I were really excited to meet with your students a couple of weeks ago to introduce ourselves and go over the course selection process. And we hope this evening gives you a nice overview of what to expect. I'd like to take a moment to introduce um, some special guests we have with us this evening. Mr. Kyle Hozier, our principal. Hey everyone. Ms. Jennifer Johnson, assistant principal for grades seven and eight. And also my colleague Junko Matano and our three school psychologists who are gonna speak a little bit later about adolescent development. Um, as, we shared in, as were shared in recent emails, the course requests and placement decisions will be posted on the parent portal by administration following the break once we have all the course request forms. Um, tonight, so we are going to start, Ms. Matano and I, with an overview, and then the school psychologist will speak, followed by a question and answer session. As mentioned in my email, there's a form with a link. Um, so you can ask any, submit any questions you have during the presentation or at the end while we're doing our live Q&A. So let's get started. I'm going to present my screen. Okay. So I'd like to start off with the role of the counselor since that might be new for some of you. There are five counselors at the junior senior high school. Ms. Matano and I will be your child's counselor for seventh through ninth grade. If your child's last name starts A through LE, Ms. Matano will be their counselor. And if their last name is LI through Z, I will be their counselor. We're really there to help your students in many ways. We help them academically. We can support them with time management organization. Again, every year we'll do course planning with them. Starting in seventh grade, we meet with all of our students individually to talk about their courses for the following year. We're also there for the social emotional, um, whether they're navigating new friendships, they have any personal concerns that arise, we can support them with their social development, along with our school psychologists. As they get older, uh, we'll work with them on career and college planning in years to come. Um, we really partner with the teachers, parents, school staff, and community. We work on the seventh grade team, which is comprised of teachers from each discipline, the psychologists and counselors and administrators. We talk about a variety of activities for the seventh grade. We talk about student concerns, and we also host parent meetings. So some tips for communication. We really work with the seventh graders to work on their self-advocacy skills. We like for them to start independently reaching out to get the support they need. But of course we recommend and, and a welcome communication from parents as well. We work a little bit differently from the elementary school in that we don't have uh, formal parent-teacher conferences. Instead, we recommend that if you are um, having a specific concern about a subject that you reach out to that individual teacher. Email is a great way to communicate and start those conversations. If you have more general concerns or want to meet with the whole team, you can reach out to the team leader, the seventh grade team leader, and they can set up a parent meeting for you. That again would be with your child's teachers, counselors, psychologists, anybody that's involved with your child. Um, just as you're probably doing this year, Google Classroom is a great resource for you to work with your child, see what's happening in their classes, whether it be upcoming tests, projects, great way to start a conversation and help them keep themselves organized as well. I'm now going to turn it over to uh, my colleague, Junko Matano, who's going to talk to you about the seventh grade schedule. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Oh. So hi, I'm Junko Matano. And just like what Ms. Moore said, I'll be your child's counselor if their last names start from A through LE. I'm looking forward to getting to know your children and working with you to support them through their important years in the junior and senior high school. We're not sure what September will look like at this point. However, assuming that we can have a more typical school year, this is a sample schedule of a nine period day. The classes are 40 minutes long and students have a four minute break in between classes. You can see that students will take math, science, social studies. Everyone will have one same lunch period. Um, you can see uh, during sixth period that there's STEAM and health and there are semester long classes that meet every day. If students start the STEAM class in September, they will switch to health during the second half of the year, which is usually at the end of January. 
Students will have physical education classes every other day for the full year. Depending on the music class that students choose, or if they need resource room support or ENL support, they will have the various music classes shown on this slide and or art classes. If you're interested in what they will be learning in each of these classes, please refer to the curriculum bulletin that is on our high school website that we mentioned earlier in our presentation. There are four quarters at Edgemont High School and therefore students and parents will receive four report cards during the school year. There are also progress reports that some of the teachers post on the parent portal in the middle of every quarter. And the next slide is going to be about extra help. Um, each teacher has two assigned extra help sessions per week before and or after school. Morning extra help start at 7.50 and after school extra help is from 3.05 to 4 o'clock. Extra help is a great time to ask clarifying questions about a topic, prepare for a test or a quiz, review performance on a test or a quiz, receive help on assignments. Students do not need to make appointments with the teachers. They can stay for the whole hour to work with the teacher or stay for a shorter amount of time. While we want our students to develop into independent learners, our teachers and are wonderful and they will also encourage students to come for extra help. Now the next slide, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about extracurricular clubs. There are many clubs that our students can join. For example, there's an animation club, technology club, and the animal rights club, just to name a few. Clubs usually meet once a week or twice a month before or after school. There's an activities fair in September that the PTSA hosts for the students during their lunch period. Many clubs will have student members available to answer questions about their clubs. As the clubs start to meet, the daily bulletin will have announcements of when and what classrooms the clubs are meeting. The daily bulletin is on the high school website and is updated every day when school is in session. Students also have a choice to choose athletic activities. Uh, we offer modified level sports for seventh and eighth graders. There are three seasons, fall, spring, and winter. Some students play all three seasons, or students can choose to play one or two team sports during the school year. Practice is typically five days per week. By the way, students can attend extra help and then participate in sports unless they have away games, since practice starts at 4 p.m. Please visit the athletics website for more information. Mr. DeRosa, our athletic director, is very helpful if you have any questions. This is an um, uh, example, all the modified sports that we typically offer. Um, there are three seasons, fall, winter, and spring season, as you can see. And students can choose one sports per season. Getting involved in a club and our sport is a great way for your child to meet other students with similar interests. We like to see our students being involved in extracurricular activities, but you may need to help your child if they seem like they're taking on too many activities. On the other hand, they may hesitate a bit to get involved. It's a good opportunity to have a discussion with your child about balancing homework time, social life, and activities. Ms. Moore and I are always available to help with their planning. Now, I'd like to introduce you to our three very helpful and wonderful school psychologists, Dr. Greenwald, Dr. Shapiro, and Ms. Younger. First, I think Dr. Greenwald is going to talk to us about social emotional development. Hi, good evening. My name is Michelle Greenwald and I, along with Robin Younger and Ms. Shapiro, as Ms. Matano just said, are the three school psychologists at the junior and senior high school. We'd like to speak with you tonight about changes you may see in your children over the next couple of years as they go through early adolescence and what you as parents can do to help. Keep in mind that during this year, it's important that we keep in mind that some of the changes may be more apparent or exacerbated due to the pandemic and that children's social and emotional growth has likely been impacted during this past year. The following are some statements we've heard from parents of seventh and eighth grade students pre-pandemic, which exemplify some of the typical changes that can occur. 
My daughter used to talk to me about school. Now she seems to always wanna be on her phone or go on the computer. My son flips off the computer screen whenever I walk by. He gets mad when I ask what he's up to. My daughter asked to stay at a friend's house overnight. When I called, I heard lots of kids in the background. She said her friend's parents were home, but I wasn't sure if I should ask to speak to them. My friend called me and told me there was a group chat where my son's feelings got hurt. When I asked him about it, he said, I'm fine, you would understand anyway. Early adolescence is a time of many changes. Change is exciting and new, but also can be challenging. In addition to the change in the school and the structure of the school environment that occurs when your children enter the junior high, and this year layered with the complexities due to the pandemic, there will also be experienced several personal changes. There are the physical changes of puberty, some beginning early, some later, emotional changes, such as increased self-consciousness and varying moods, cognitive changes, including an increased ability to reason and think and worry about what's happening in their lives, which is even more present right now, and social changes, which as we all know, is probably the most salient aspect of early adolescence. These may include new friendships, disruptions in friendships, and an overall increased closeness to their peers, and a general need to be one of the gang and fit in, which may result in them not always being so thoughtful in how they treat one another. And we've seen this play out many times on social media, which you've probably heard yourselves. Although during junior high, your children become very involved with their friends, their activities, and their schoolwork, and may want to spend less time with you, this is a time your children need you more than ever. A strong relationship with a parent is the best protection as your child grows and explores and can truly serve as a buffer against some of the negative experiences that can occur in early adolescence. Robin Younger is now gonna speak with you about what you as parents can do to help during this time. Thank you. Robin, you have Sorry, to unmute. Of course, I forgot to unmute myself, um, the, the perils of online. So what can you do to help? Keep in mind that there are many additional layers given that your children's social and school experience has been very different over this past year. How you treat these layers is an individual decision, yet there are certain guidelines that are universal and can be used at any time to help provide your kids with consistency and support as they grow. For one, it's important to listen and talk to your children and provide support as they struggle with problems that may seem unimportant to adults. For example, a friend not responding to a text might feel very hurtful. Also, set limits. As parents, it's important to consistently provide structure and supervision that's firm and age appropriate. Limits at any age keep kids safe. This could include curfews, not being able to go to a friend's house unsupervised, coming home after school or from sports, or limited screen time, especially during the pandemic. And if your child does not listen, for example, comes home after curfew or doesn't follow the screen limits, then make their actions have consequences. Keep in mind that the pandemic might change the activities that your kids engage in, but not the fact that you're still setting limits. Teaching your children to become good problem solvers and helping them to learn how to deal with setbacks and failure is critical as well. They need to learn that although they may make mistakes, they can overcome them and move forward to do things differently the next time. Guiding and encouraging them to problem solve situations that are more challenging will also help them feel empowered and more self-reliant. Encourage your child to have balance. While focusing on schoolwork, they should also have fun with friends and family and not be overscheduled with activities. Try to have mealtime together as often as possible. Also, make sure they're sleeping enough and that they know that getting a good night's sleep is a priority. Stay involved in your child's life. Get to know your child's friends. Get to know the parents of your child's friends. Monitor friendships to help your child avoid risky and unhealthy behavior. It's important to know who your child's friends are and what they are doing together. Don't be afraid to say no if your child um, is uncomfortable uh, with where they are or if you're uncomfortable with where they are. Also, encourage them to question what they're doing and to look at what kinds of choices they're making when they're with their friends. Monitor their use of cell phones and the computer, particularly their text messages and social networking sites such as Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, and Discord. Know what they're doing and talk to them about their usage and potential consequences. This is especially important at this point in time, given that kids are on their devices more and more, both for social and academic needs. Teach your child how to get out of difficult peer situations. 
It's good to help children come up with ways to handle these situations before they occur so that they are prepared. Encourage kindness and empathy. Be alert to major problems such as depression and eating disorders and don't hesitate to ask for help if needed. We know that middle school is very, a very exciting yet sometimes challenging time in your child's life and we're all available to help and support you and your children in order to make this time a successful and positive experience. Dr. Shapiro will now speak with you about some of the supports we have here at the junior and senior high school. Thanks, Robin. So um, as was mentioned, we are available, uh, the three school psychologists, the counselors to provide support and feedback to you, to the students uh, and to the teachers. And we do so on a regular basis. In terms of our locations, my office is in the A building, a little bit separate from the counseling suite where the rest of the team is. Um, so the students kind of have access wherever they are on campus to us, whether it's a crisis or whether they're actually making an appointment with us, which they could do by email uh, or just stopping by um, and uh, you know um, establishing a connection with us and, and making a time. Um, we will meet with students individually. We may make a group. We have lots of group offerings for kids. Uh, we do consult, consults with teachers pretty much every day. And there are times we, were, we consult with the seventh, eighth and ninth grade teams um, when a student is having a difficult time adjusting or there's something that, uh, that you wanna make the team of teachers available um, you want to you want to uh, have them know about your child. You want to discuss that. We are usually there to consult as well. Um, in terms of the group things we do to encourage social emotional learning, I operate a program in my office when we're not in a pandemic called the We De Stress Friday programs. I do that during the seventh and eighth grade lunch periods. It's uh, my office is a little bit bigger and there are couches and it's comfortable and I have a small TV inside. Um, I don't know how I got so lucky, but um, we, uh, we basically um, have the kids come in at lunch. They usually bring their food and they get to know people. So it's a nice icebreaker for kids that might be a little intimidated in the beginning of the year by the largeness of the cafeteria. So that's something to look out for. Um, later on, when the kids are in eighth grade, they enter a team talk program. That's a curricular program. All of the students will cycle through that. That's led by my colleagues, Dr. Greenwald and Ms. Younger. And then later on in high school, we operate a, uh, I operate a program called the Peer Advocacy Program, which is for all students in the high school, which is voluntary. Uh, but many students in the ninth grade, as you'll hear when you come for your students' ninth grade orientation, they will participate in that. Um, a few years ago, probably about four or five years ago, we started a seventh grade mentorship program that is pairing seventh graders with an upperclassman who's interested in providing mentorship. Um, and many of our older students are now cycling through uh, a situation where they were men mentee, they were mentored by someone older than them, and now they want to be a mentor and give back. And so it's been successful. They, they generally uh, connect with uh, four or five different students. Sometimes they'll meet with them in group. They'll offer an opportunities for individual discussion. It, it's a nice opportunity for kids to get feedback from people that have more recently been through the challenges that are going, they're going through so that they don't necessarily always have to seek one of us out. That said, we provide supervision to all of the mentors so that if there is an issue that needs our attention, the students are trained and know that they need to come to us to address that issue. Um, and you can find about everything we do, everything I just mentioned on our psychological services webpage, uh, which is on the EHS website. Um, and we look forward to meeting with you and working with you. And I'll hand it back to Lauren and Junko. You're muted, you're muted, Lauren. Lauren. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> before we jump into question and answers, I just want to talk about what's to come with the transition program. Uh, we certainly recognize that this is their one and only big move, um, which is very exciting. But of course, we want to make sure they're feeling um, as ready as possible. So we started our orientation program by meeting with the students, Ms. Matano and I, a couple of weeks ago. We introduced ourselves, shared our role. Um, a lot of what we shared tonight, we shared with them along with talking about their course selections. In May, 
we're planning orientation days where each school will come and visit us so they can see the campus. Um, we'll obviously make sure safety measures are taken, but we're going to host small group tours. And we'll also have a panel of experts, which will be um, a panel of older students that have been through the transition and can speak about their experiences, their tips, and there'll be time for question and answer. The day before school, we host on deck day um, and they'll come to campus with their schedule. They'll receive their schedule in late August. They'll come to on deck day where they will meet their high school counselor uh, mentor and their mentor will give them a tour of campus with their schedule so they can see their classrooms and familiarize themselves before the first day of school um, and get to know each other and see each other as the seventh grade. And then the first week of school, the seventh grade team of teachers put together um, an orientation program with various activities to help them with the transition as they start their first week of school. So that's a little bit about what's to come, but we'd love to open it up to question and answers now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start reading some of the questions. So um, to start off, I see there were there were two questions originally posted about the emails about the course selections. I think that has been clarified in follow up emails. Um, but again, the course um, requests along with the level recommendations will be sent after the break once we have all the course request forms and we know what your student is planning to take in terms of world language and music along with their other courses. So be on the lookout for that. All right, so I'm going to start with the first question. What kind of modified JV, JV sports are offered to seventh graders? I can um, take that question. So um, seventh and eighth graders usually play on the modified level sports. Um, however, if a student is interested in JV level sports, there is a process involved. And um, if a student goes through the process, um, at times it is possible for seventh and eighth graders to participate in a JV or varsity level sport. Um, so please, you know, if you or your child's thinking about that, um, we would really recommend that you contact Mr. DeRosa, the athletic director. Great. The next question is, um, I know it probably differs by subject, but what is the approximate class size in the middle school? Is it different for core classes versus specials like PE, art, or music? So great question. Um, the majority of our classes are around 25 students, sometimes a little bit less than that, depending on the class, but that is our, our typical size class. Um, the only difference would be PE um, and band and chorus um, and strings. Those are different. Those are typically a larger class size. The next question. Is any prior experience required for band? Is keyboard an instrument option? Is guitar an instrument option? I can answer that. I am a music lover. Um, so uh, unfortunately, um, keyboard and guitar, um, that is not part of our brass band. Um, however, if a student is interested in starting a new instrument, uh, Mr. Cataliato, our music teacher, band teacher, is very helpful, um, and he can definitely guide your child to what they might be interested in starting in terms of instruments and um, what might be fairly an easier instrument to start at the junior high level. Um, so Mr. Cataliato would be the person for you to speak to, and we could connect you with Mr. Cataliato. Great, thank you. How are students subject, uh, subject placements decided? What subjects are offered at different levels? Will we conference with teachers slash counselors to determine or discuss our child's class placements? Um, so at the seventh grade level, um, as you've read in previous emails, there are different levels for math. And we also offer um, an English class that has a lab for students that might need some additional support with their reading and writing. Um, when you receive your course request following the break, it will specify the level that was recommended by the teachers um, in terms of math based on the criteria that you received earlier um, a couple of months ago from the math department chair. Um, if you have questions about the placement, we'd recommend you reach out to your child's teacher 
um, and they can, you know, talk to you about why they think this is the best placement for your child. Again, when we make placement decisions and as they're older and teachers make recommendations, we want to make sure students are placed in classes where they're going to meet with most success and at the junior high level where we're going to make sure they they're building all of the foundational skills they need for success moving forward. Okay. The next question is. When specifically will Sealy sixth graders be able to go on site for orientation to EHS this academic year? I can take that question. Sure. Um, so Ms. Moore and I with our administrators are really starting to talk about how can we safely have our sixth graders visit our campus. Um, so as of now, if things continue to improve, um, we are planning to have Sealy students and Greenville students visit us for orientation day in May, sometime in May. Um, and typical years, we would have a full day um, orientation, but we definitely think it's important for your children to have a chance to see our campus, walk around, and hear from some of our older students about their experience. Um, so we will let you know when we have a date set for sometime in May. Great. If my child starts a foreign language and hates it, can he switch in the beginning of the year or does he need to finish out the year? Uh, so we do ask that you're uh, mindful in making the world language uh, decision. Of course, if we're having, you know, if it's students really struggling or having a difficult time in a world language, a great time to come and talk to your counselor for you to speak with a teacher and we can figure out what to do. Um, many times students will complete the year in seventh and if they need to switch, perhaps switch. Sometimes a student might be having a difficult time in a language and we might discontinue it in seventh grade. And we have an additional option in eighth grade called Spanish for communication for students that might have more difficulties with the grammatical pieces of world language. Um, so again, if you know, when in doubt, you can always speak to us or the teacher and we can figure out what to do. But most of the time students do enjoy their language um, and continue with it. Um, the next question is, do seventh grade students participate in musicals or plays? Yes. Seventh and eighth graders, um, they really enjoy participating in different things throughout the school. Um, we have been able to offer a junior high school musical um, for the past few years, and um, the children have really enjoyed that. Um, last year, um, they were even um, able to have one over online. Um, so I watched my whole family actually um, logged on, and it was quite entertaining. Um, so yes, you will um, definitely get information about when signups are and things like that. Uh, Mr. Hozier's weekly emails are very helpful. Um, he usually includes information like that for us. Um, and there's also the daily bulletin that students and parents can check that's online. That was actually our last question. Um, that has come in. So again, if you have any questions that come up following this presentation or if you're watching it um, after, you can reach out to your child's counselor, the psychologist, and our, our administrative team. We're all here to help your child make this a smooth transition and we look forward to working with them this year and preparing them uh, for seventh grade next year. Have a great night.